Baldur's Gate 3 is a game that doesn't hold your hand. You're given a few brief tutorials and then dropped into the world of Faerun to strike out on your own adventure. So there were a lot of things that I had to learn the hard way. And in this video, we're going to explore 10 things I wish I knew sooner in Baldur's Gate 3. Number 1. You cannot exhaust all dialogue options. Just because you see a list of seven questions at the beginning of a conversation does not necessarily mean you will be able to ask them all. Many RPGs will let you converse with NPCs until you've literally run out of things to ask. Not in this game, though. Some conversations will end abruptly without the option to continue them. This took me a while to get used to. So when you're talking to NPCs, be sure to get the information you want at the start because you might not get another chance. Take for instance this early game conversation with a druid underling in the Emerald Grove. I initially came to him looking for information on the clan healer, but seeing an opportunity to learn more about the group's politics, I sprung on this instead, only to have all other dialogue options obliterated when the convo ended. Until Master Halston returns, my eyes must stay on Korga. What do you mean, man? You can't talk and look at the same time. You're literally just sitting on your ass, dude. Now, when it comes to companion conversations, don't worry about this too much because you will have more opportunities to pick up where you left off back at the party camp. And some NPCs will allow you to reinitiate conversations rather than brushing you off. Number two, you can respec your character and change your class. This definitely would have been helpful to know because I agonized over my class choice at the beginning of the game, thinking I would never be able to change it. This was certainly the case in the original Baldur's Gate games, and I think in similar titles like Pathfinder Kingmaker as well. Not 100% on that last one, it's been like three years since I played it, but I digress. Early on in the game, right when you've escaped the Mind Flayer ship, you'll come across an ancient door next to the Overgrown Ruins Waypoint. You can either lockpick this door, or enter through the ruined chapel up top where you encounter a group of bandits. If you missed this at the start, don't worry, you can always fast travel back here later. Inside you'll find an undead NPC named Withers who you can recruit to your camp after speaking with him. Once he's at your camp, you can pay him 100 gold to respec or change your class. This option is super helpful if you either don't like your current build or want to switch to another class entirely because maybe you picked up some companions who fill the same role. In any case, knowing this option existed in advance would have saved me some unneeded stress in the character creation screen. Number 3. You don't need to fight fairly. Lately, I've been playing some pretty casual RPGs and action games where the main character is overpowered, marching headfirst into a group of enemies and systematically eviscerating them all. But when I tried the same approach in Baldur's Gate 3, I got my ass whooped. So don't be like me. Whenever you're approaching a difficult encounter, especially ones where you're heavily outnumbered, do your best to set up your characters and initiate combat with a surprise attack, preferably from the high ground. This can make all the difference in the world and prevent you from buying a one-way ticket to Cuck Town. Take this early game fight with Dror Ragslin and his goblin goons. On my first attempt, I initiated combat via a cutscene and got absolutely demolished since my team was outnumbered by a factor of about 4 to 1. After wiping and reloading a save, I decided to climb into the rafters instead and use ranged attacks to knock the braziers down on their stupid heads. This completely turned the course of the fight into an encounter that seemed unwinnable to one that was relatively easy. Baldur's Gate 3 often puts you in situations where you are massively outnumbered, so don't be afraid to resorting to subterfuge and trickery to get the upper hand on your enemies. Number 4. You can swap to different companions for new dialogue options and skill checks. Having played Dragon Age and Mass Effect, I'm used to RPGs where only the main character can initiate conversations with NPCs. But in Baldur's Gate 3, you can switch to a companion to talk with other NPCs, and in some cases this will open up different options for skill checks and dialogue. I actually stumbled upon this one by complete accident. While I was shuffling NPCs in the goblin camp, I accidentally triggered a cutscene after switching to a Starian, and I noticed I was able to utilize the Illithid Wisdom speech check, even though I had just used it with my main character a few minutes earlier. Typically this is a skill that you can only use once per long rest. So I was able to abuse this a bit to avoid combat for most of my goblin camp exploration. I even opened up some cleric specific dialogue in a different cutscene by switching to Shadowheart before initiating dialogue. 
Number five, the importance of throwable items and environmental status effects. I seriously wish I knew how overpowered status effects and throwable items were in this game. Chucking a jar of grease onto your enemies and then lighting it on fire with a spell is a great way to create AoE damage and limit the mobility of your opponents. I mainly played Baldur's Gate 1 and 2 before picking this up, and from what I remember, you really only had basic attacks, spells, and abilities to fight opponents. So I wasn't expecting to essentially chuck Molotov cocktails in a Dungeons & Dragons game. I'll definitely be stocking up on a healthy amount of throwable items next time I venture out into the world. Number 6. I wish I knew which items were actually useful. Baldur's Gate 3 has a lot of loot and random items, but it's not initially clear which items actually have utility. For instance, in a game like Skyrim or Oblivion, shovels are just random junk that take up space in your inventory. But in BG3, you can use shovels to dig up hidden loot that your party discovers along the road. I'm embarrassed to say I literally didn't even realize I could dig up items until like 10 hours into the game. Maybe because I didn't choose perception as one of my starting skills. Oh well, I guess I'll have to respect that if I can too. Number 7, you can auto loot with spacebar. There is a ton of loot in this game, and in most cases you'll be picking up all of it. So one quality of life feature is that you can auto loot all items by hitting spacebar after you've opened a chest or dead NPC's inventory. Inventory management and encumbrous play a major role in this game, so anything that cuts down on time looting and swapping items is a blessing. Also, be sure to hit tab as well to open up all companion inventories and transfer items off your main character to keep your equipment load lower. I kinda wish this game just had one shared inventory like the Pathfinder games, but oh well. Number 8. Don't ignore movement spells and abilities. One thing I quickly learned is that you'll spend a lot of time in combat moving your characters just to get them into range to make an attack. So having spells and abilities to allow you to cover more distance is incredibly important. For instance, rogues can use Expeditious Retreat to cover more ground. Wizards have a teleportation spell. I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head, but I know they have one. And all characters have a dash ability. Use these abilities and you'll be zipping all over the battlefield, crushing your opponents in record time. Number 9. You can stack and climb on boxes to reach higher places. This is a really cool feature I wish I knew about earlier. You can create a stack of boxes or other objects and climb on top of them to adventure into places you couldn't otherwise reach. You can climb objects instead of looting them by right clicking and selecting the climb option. Not all objects in the game are scalable, but you'd be surprised at the places you can reach. So try it out for yourself next time you boot up the game. And finally, number 10, I wish I remembered to equip ranged weapons on every character. There are some situations where you cannot reach your enemies, such as if you climbed into the rafters to get to the drop on a large group. But fret not, because you can swap to range weapons in the middle of combat so your melee characters are not uselessly standing there waiting for the enemies to group up. You can do this by swapping between melee and ranged weapon sets in the action bar in the bottom. So there you have it. 10 things I wish I knew about sooner in Baldur's Gate 3. I hope you found these tips helpful, or at the very least got a laugh out of my mistakes in the early game. If you liked this video, be sure to subscribe to Big Dan Gaming for more RPG videos. Big shout out to all the channel members for supporting my content. Until next time, this has been Big Dan. I should go.